Hello, it is Michelle, and welcome to my September 2014 reading wrap-up. I finished nine books in the month of September. One of them was a novella bind-up, but it's big enough to be considered a novel, I guess. I started out reading book three in the game series by Terry Schott, and this is called Brandon Interlude, and it is a prequel, and I can't really say much about it without spoiling books one or two. But basically this did a very good job of explaining how things came to be as they were at the beginning of book one. And it was some information that was going to be necessary going forward in the series. He pulled it off pretty nicely. Uh, the story was still very captivating even though it had happened mostly in the past. I did get a little fuzzy on details at time and I don't know if that's because I took a break between reading one and two and then kind of a break and then three or if it was just because I was kind of preoccupied with school starting, but I did end up giving it four stars out of five on Goodreads. Then I read a book that was recommended to me by my husband's Uncle Joey. We visited Uncle Joey this summer, and he's a big reader, and I was looking at his shelves and just happened to ask him, what's your favorite book that you've ever read? And he said, A Man Called Noon by Louis L'Amour. So, of course, I had to put that book on my TBR. So, um... Reading this book, the plot was very interesting. The descriptions of the settings were phenomenal. I felt like I was right there, could see, hear, smell everything. Um, the action scenes, not so much. I had trouble kind of visualizing what I was reading. And for me, the dialogue fell flat. There were really no nonverbal clues given. So you had no kind of like posture or facial expression to go with what was being said to tell if someone was being serious or silly or, or whatnot. Um, basically, the plot takes place at the beginning of the story. There's a man. He's been grazed by a bullet and fallen backwards out of a two-story window. He's in the Old West, and he has amnesia now. He doesn't know if he's a good guy, a bad guy, who's out to get him, who he should hide from, who would help him. And so he has to kind of discover this. Along the way, he thinks he might belong to one identity, but there are also clues that he might belong to a second one. So it gets very interesting. I did enjoy it overall and gave it a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Then I read Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Moss. I thought it was going to launch into Air of Fire, but realized I probably should read the prequel novella bind up first. So I did that. And if you've read... Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight, you know who Sam Cortland is, and these five stories together basically tell the story of Selena and Sam and their their backstory. Um, I totally enjoyed all five stories in here. I loved how together they told one overall story and felt more like a novel. It revealed so much about Selena and how she developed as a young woman and gave a lot of insight into the kind of person that she is. Um, there was a point where she ran into Kale and Dorian, and they were unnamed. And although I am a grown-up, I was basically squealing like a little girl at a One Direction concert. So happy to see them. That's just how good Sarah J. Moss's characters are and how much you get invested in them. I love how she keeps you guessing as to what's going to happen. She drops juicy hints, and then she wows you with twists at the end. I gave this bind up five stars out of five on Goodreads. Next, I went, and read, went ahead and read book four in the game by Terry Schott. And this book goes back to the storyline set up in books one and two. It's no longer the prequel uh, like book three was. Um, again, I wish I had marathon read this series because I was a little hazy on the details. But overall, it was still captivating. I still loved it. I don't want to say too much and give away spoilers. But this story is so robust. There are phenomenal characters. And this series is just major brain candy for me. I gave it four out of five stars. Then I finally got around to Air of Fire by Sarah J. Moss, which is book three in the Throne of Glass series. And... I was a little worried going in. I had heard mixed reviews. Uh, I was a little reserved whether I would like it or not. I knew we were in a new world. I knew it probably wasn't going to have too much interaction between Selena and the characters that she had interacted with before. So I was a little worried about how it would develop overall. I thought the new characters added a lot of fresh elements. Lots of dark creatures in this one. Lots of backstory as far as 
uh, politics are concerned in the world. Loved how that shed light on things. She even cleared up some things that had bothered me, uh, decisions relate, related to decisions that Selena had made that had bugged me about that was so irrational. Why would she do that? And there was even insight in Era Fire about that. So I kind of feel like the bones that I had to pick, which were not many at all with the previous two books, were resolved uh, with this book. Um, and her world just got so much bigger, so much better. The world building was phenomenal. And she's just fun to read. It's just absolutely fun to read anything by Sarah J. Moss. Um, I really felt sorry for books that I was going to read right after this because anything was going to suffer by comparison. I gave it five out of five stars on Goodreads. Because I did not want to go anywhere near fantasy after reading Assassin's Blade and Air of Fire, I picked up some realistic fiction and I went with Once by Morris Gleitzman. I chose this because Dylan from Dylan Books had included this in one of his videos about books that made him cry. Um, this is told from the perspective of a young Jewish man in Nazi invaded Poland. And he's in an orphanage, and it basically follows him as he slowly uncovers and gets more insight into what is going on and how the world isn't always rosy. So it was very touching. However, somehow I managed not to cry. I don't know how that happened, um, but I did give this four out of five stars on Goodreads. Then I still was not going anywhere near fantasy and decided to pick up The Star Thief, um... This was a book that I had gotten cheap on my Kindle, and it follows a young woman in her early 20s, and she is a thief in the future, and although it's touted as a space opera, it really didn't need to be set in space, I don't think. The space part of it doesn't play in a whole lot. Um, but I loved how the thief business worked. I loved her. The, the protagonist is snarky she can kind of take care of herself but yet she knows she's not perfect and she second guesses her decisions a whole lot and I just really enjoyed reading her there was lots of action there was lots of technology integrated into the story and it was just fun to read the new adult portion in this particular book I found to be frivolous and awkward and a little too casual for me but maybe that's just a personal preference I did give the book overall a four out of five stars on Goodreads because I had recently made the mistake of waiting too long to continue a series, I decided to just go ahead and launch into book two of the Star Thief Chronicles, and that is Athena's Ashes. And I loved how this book kind of concentrated on more of her inability to commit in a relationship and dealt with kind of themes of loyalty and how your past can haunt you. Um, I did think the pacing was a little bit off. I thought a few things were introduced in kind of a rushed fashion and other thing, other portions were a little slow. But in this book I felt like the new adult scenes were a little more relevant. Um, still a little superficial but a lot more relevant and I did enjoy it, especially the hook at the end that the author could use to continue the series even more. So gave this one also four stars out of five on Goodreads. And the last book that I finished in September 2014 was a book called Puddle Jumping. And this is written from the perspective of a teenage girl. And she starts up a relationship with a young man who has high-functioning autism. And it was really interesting to see how their interactions worked with him being so literal and unable to kind of recognize tone of voice or nonverbal cues um, in their relationship. It was a very engaging story. It was touching. Um, I loved how it kind of explored that not everyone is easy to love and that sometimes you sacrifice to love somebody who's not easy to love. I did think that the girlfriend's perspective at times was too mature and almost in an awkward way maternal. And I think I understand it more now that I have read the um, author's notes at the end of the book. Um, this author actually has a son who has autism, I'm assuming high functioning. And so I think maybe um, she got a little blurred between writing as the mother of, or, you know, between being the mother of someone with high functioning autism and trying to keep the perspective uh, from the girlfriend. So... 
that's a little creepy, but I still really enjoyed this story, and it actually uh, helped me b understand better a few of my students at school and be able to relate a little better to them. So that was an added bonus, and I did give this uh, puddle jumping four out of five stars on Goodreads. So um, thanks for watching, and happy reading.